texted Megan and said, you got to come to the Golden Globes, Megan Marco. We don't have her number. Yeah! <laughs> so, I hope she'll see. She'll watch. I know I've most likely said this before, but oh, how the mighty have fallen. You know you're in trouble when the disingenuous Hollywood elites are well and truly on the anti meghan and Harry bandwagon. And I've always said, better late than never, but I mean, they're pretty much three to four years too late, if you ask me. And I think they're only hopping on the bandwagon because it's now the popular thing to do to make fun of Meghan and Harry. Don't forget, these were the very people who would stand up for them and defend their wrongdoing when it was the popular thing to do so. Circa 2020, even 2019, 2018, up until pretty much late 2021, really. Have we all forgotten how Meghan's knight in shining armor, no, not Prince Harry, her co-star Patrick, dedicated his entire Twitter feed to defending her when she probably couldn't care less whether he lived or otherwise? Aww. For me, it's not a matter of gloating or anything like that. It's just a matter of seeing evil people get their just desserts. And seeing their just desserts being delivered to them in record time, thanks to all of our hard work on social media, spreading the truth, airing out their wrongdoing, until the likes of Hollywood have finally caught up. To be honest, I couldn't care less what these Hollywood elites think, but Megan, on the other hand, borderline worships Hollywood. In fact, everything she's done in her life has been to infiltrate Hollywood's topmost echelon. I mean, we know that because she kicked aside royalty to go back to Hollywood. That's how hungry and thirsty she is to win their favor. And boy, did her plan backfire or what? I shouldn't have left the made up nonsense. Now, a lot of people are saying, oh, they were snubbed at the Golden Globes. I mean, they were mocked at the Golden Globes. There's no doubt about that. And rightfully so. People in Hollywood actually work really hard because they know that if you don't, there are thousands of other aspiring young ingenues waiting to take your place. Clearly a lesson that Megan never learned during her failed attempt at infiltrating the Hollywood set even before she met Harry, but they know what hard work is, at least until they get to a certain level of success and fame. And then it's smooth sailing from there, but you can say they've earned it. Megan and Harry, they haven't earned an invite to the Golden Globes, let alone a secure little perch at the top of the Hollywood echelon. Why would they be there? What do they do? I think the host of the Golden Globes, who I understand was a complete fail apparently, said it best. Uh, turns out Prince Harry and Meghan Markle will still get paid millions of dollars for doing absolutely nothing. And that's just by Netflix. <laughs> Meghan, living a few hours from LA, didn't even show up at a single one of those strikes that they had for most of last year in support of her fellow actors. Don't forget, she was apparently a SAG-AFTRA union member by fraud, nonetheless. She said it herself, <laughs> don't take it from me. And I got there and they were like, so you're union? I'm like, of course I'm union. Yeah, absolutely I'm union. And then I wasn't. And you told them you were union? I told them I was union and then they had to taft Hartley. You're like, the Mike Ross of <laughs> I was the such a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> the Mike Ross of auditioning. And most of her suits cast even reunited to strike in solidarity. And Megan, of course, was nowhere to be seen because she thought that she was above these people, above actors, perhaps even above Hollywood. I mean, she thought she was above the queen. So, yeah. Speaking of her suit castmates, they didn't seem too interested in being asked questions about her, and I can't say I blame them. Weren't these the very people who weren't even invited to her reception after the wedding? We are so close. It, it's the biggest blessing, right, to work on a show where you just love the people you're with every day. Imagine that. Imagine the message that sends. You're going to invite strangers like George and Amal Clooney, but your castmates of seven plus years? 
you're just gonna see out the door, bye-bye, thanks for coming to the wedding, talk to you never. In my view, there is some animosity between her and her ex-castmates. Gee, I wonder why. I mean, this is a woman who leaves a trail of people in her wake, people she's used and discarded. And her castmates are no different. Apart from Patrick, who seems to be still quite enamored or taken by Megan, everyone else just entirely shut down any question about her. And some of them added some sass into it. She'll see, she'll watch. So apart from karma, I think the message here also is be kind to everyone on the way up because you probably meet the same people on the way down. Now, of course, Megan being Megan, she had to clap back and give answers. You know, she's still hush about Endgame and whether she contributed to the book or whether she had nothing to do with it, where the names came from, are they the right names, etc., etc. nothing. But she's oh so quick to clap back at certain things such as the Golden Globes snub. So first we hear that, oh, it was because Megan would need extra security, there would be heightened security concerns, never mind the fact that she's gonna be surrounded by the most powerful and important people in Hollywood in one room. But then we hear a different story, which is just as ridiculous and unbelievable. Apparently, Megan was too busy. She had a pre-existing engagement. Where, in a parking lot? <laughs> With the paparazzi? Or getting milkshakes for your invisible children? So much for, I don't know what people say about me because I don't read it. Now here's a real snub for you. And this one really caught my interest being military myself. Prince Harry has been completely left out of a book called They Also Served, 200 People Who Trained at Sandhurst, which is basically Sandhurst's most notable alumni. And Prince William was not only included, as he should, he's been a very loyal serviceman throughout the years, but also wrote the foreword to the book. Now, I say this is a snub only because Prince Harry's entire identity seems to center around the military, which I've always found a little bit confusing because from everything we've heard, he hasn't really had a very conventional military life. Let me put it that way. I've talked about this before at length, actually. I think when I reviewed his book and also when I talked about his 25 Taliban comments and, you know, people as chess pieces and whatnot, but I've served and I have trained at an officer training institution, just like Prince Harry. In fact, I think ours is a little bit more full on because it's 18 months rather than 44 weeks. So I know exactly what officers have to go through. I know the entrance requirements, which let me tell you, had Harry been your average Joe with the grades he had at school, there's no way, no way in hell that he would have set foot into that institution. These places are very competitive, they're very prestigious, and they're very difficult to get into. A bunch of D's in your wake from school, just ain't gonna cut it. And that's without the aptitude tests, the leadership tests, the psychology tests, all the tests that we have to do just to get in. There's no way. I've seen finer people get turned away and told to try again or thanks but no thanks. So if he was given preferential treatment, in my opinion, to get into Sandhurst, then imagine what preferential treatment he got during his training the hand-holding, the coddling. And while I have no proof that he was helped, he basically outs himself in his book when he talks about his time in the army. I mean, it was like reading a fairy tale from someone who has served. What, what are you talking about? We don't all get to request meetings with the chief of army or generals without going through the chain of command. And even then, there's no guarantee you're gonna get right up to the top and talk to the higher ups. And I can assure you that all of us don't have roles basically created for us or we don't have generals bending over backwards to placate us and give us roles that we covet. 
Even when we are completely qualified for the job, there's no guarantee you're going to get it. You can put down your preferences, but you get assigned wherever you get assigned, wherever the military deems you are needed. And that's not the experience that Prince Harry himself admitted to having in his book. They did everything to make him happy. And I'm sorry, that does not make a very robust and well-rounded soldier, let alone officer. So the fact that he was left out is a snub in his head, obviously. I mean, I bet he is very distraught over this. But again, it's kind of much like Meghan with the Golden Globes. Harry, this is not a participation award. You have to be more than just a prince to make it into the 200 most notable alumni. I mean, that's a very short list in comparison to the thousands upon thousands who graduated from Sandhurst. What qualifies Harry? We know he's been called Bunker Harry. Don't know if that's true, but people who have served alongside him have referred to him in that manner because he was protected. He was coddled and he shed some light into this in his own book. Again, he talks about how he was extracted from places, sent home against his will because he was in danger. And while some of that is not his fault, while his title as a prince automatically did put some extra danger and interest in him from the enemy, that still doesn't mean that he deserves to be put in a book where he really didn't do anything of note. The worst part is the actual author of the book, Vaughn Kent Payne, says that not everybody who trained there was a good egg. There is a smattering of traitors and cads. And I don't know if he had Prince Harry on his mind when he said that, but something tells me that he did. And would you look at that? Less than 24 hours since the announcement of the military snub, we have Prince Harry being honored as a living legend of aviation at Beverly Hills on the 19th of January. Coincidence? It could be, but it also couldn't. And given Meghan and Harry's track record of somehow always putting something out there to compete with William and Catherine, I wouldn't be surprised if this was yet another attempt. However, don't get your knickers twisted in a knot because I had a look at the criteria for this award. The living legends of aviation are remarkable people of extraordinary accomplishment in aviation, including entrepreneurs, innovators, industry leaders, astronauts, record breakers, pilots who have become celebrities and celebrities who have become pilots. Now, everything before the word pilots who have become celebrities seems to be worthy of the award. These seem to be people who have contributed to aviation, but pilots who have become celebrities and celebrities who have become pilots, that instantly diminishes from the credibility of this award in my eyes, especially in comparison to awarding military heroes or veterans or just people who have contributed in service of their country. I don't know, maybe that's just me. I'm biased, I'm military myself. But to put things in perspective, Jeff Bezos's fiance, Lauren Sanchez, is set to be honored as well. Now, I'm not taking away from her. I understand she's an accomplished helicopter pilot and started an aerial film company, good for her. But a living legend? I don't know. The word legend holds a little bit more gravitas in my book. So let this be a lesson to everyone, I suppose, who wants to be lazy, entitled, evil, and wants to cruise through life thriving rather than learning how to survive because we all need to survive here. Thriving is, is a privilege that is not guaranteed to a single one of us. But of course, Meghan and Harry didn't get the memo. I mean, sometimes you can't blame Prince Harry because he's a royal, he's a prince, and that's just how he was raised. But you think someone like Meghan, who, according to her, had to tough it out, you know, get a job when she was 13, when it was illegal, and work her way through university to get scholarships and get jobs and get positions and just elevate herself, feminist that she is, you think she'd know that it takes hard work and dedication to make it up to the top. There are no shortcuts, but rather than teach her husband that lesson and show him that we're not all privileged royals who have army generals bending over backwards to make our dreams come true, she added fuel to the fire with her own entitlement because 
Her entire story of climbing her way up to the top through hard work and tears was a lie. And we know that because her father said it all, her sister has said it all, and guess what? Megan's not the one suing Samantha for defamation. It's the other way around. So yeah, karma is always there. Karma is real. My goodness, is it real? And it's really, really satisfying after spending most of my life believing that evil people get away with everything that they do time and time again. It is just so good to actually see some type of justice playing out before our very eyes. And while revenge may be a dish best served cold, I like my justice served fresh, nice, piping hot. And now I'm making myself hungry, so I think I'm gonna go have lunch. Thanks for watching, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.